five creepy true sleepover horror stories. I don't know why I thought it said Home Alone horror story. I farted, excuse me. I thought it said Home Alone horror story. Okay, let's go. Let's get it. <laughs> so, dumb. Also, I just want to let you know, but before we get started, I hope these sleepovers, everybody knows one another, you know? And I hope it's not like somebody, like, it's not just random people. I hope, I hope it's a lot, like, you know, it's mutual. Everybody knows one another. Like, I don't need to have a sleepover and I don't not, I don't, I don't know not one person. Hell no. Nah. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm about to be, okay, for editing purposes. When I was a kid, my best friend's name was Sam. We lived only a few miles away from each other and would hang out all the time. I remember that many times I would go sleep over at his house and he would also stay over at mine sometimes. Both of our houses were pretty average for the most part, although Sam's was a little bit nicer in my opinion, and it was also a little larger. This event I'm going to talk about took place when we were both 10 years old. Sam and I went to the same school, and one day, late in the school year, I went over to his house after classes. The plan was to sleep over, and I was excited about it. I brought my sleeping bag with, and would sleep on the floor of his bedroom, so after school, I went over to Sam's house and we hung out for the rest of the day. I don't remember much, but I'm pretty sure we just played video games and stuff. We had to go to bed at probably like 10 or 11 p.m. So I set up my sleeping bag and then Sam turned out all the lights and got into his bed. At his house, every single light was off and I didn't really like that. <laughs> in my bedroom at home, I always kept a small lamp on in the corner. But you safe though, Mo. You safe, right? You you safe. That's your that's your best friend. That's your people's. That's your boy. You should feel safe, right? Something that makes sense. You should feel safe with your boy, with your homie, with your dog. And you don't. So this relationship about to end. Gave a little bit of light. And before that, I would have a nightlight in the corner of my bedroom. I just didn't like things to be completely pitch black. I really could barely see anything, but I remember that Sam's bedroom door was open and there was a small light from something. I think it was maybe the thermostat. Anyways, I remember trying to fall asleep. Sam seemed to fall asleep pretty quick, but I didn't. I really wasn't that tired for some reason. I was lying Yeah, about... because your nerves is going crazy right now. Your nerves is going crazy, you know? Your senses are, your, your clock senses is going through the roof. You know? You're in pitch blackness. And eventually tried falling asleep. But after a while, I just couldn't. Sam's bedroom was towards the end of the hallway where the other bedrooms were. Everybody else in his family had long gone to sleep and the house was completely silent. But then, I thought that I heard the sound of somebody walking. Jesus. I thought maybe it was Sam's parents or something. It was very quiet, because basically the entire house was carpet. So it wasn't easy to hear the footsteps, but you still could. Especially when it was this quiet. The entire... I looked over and then thought that I saw somebody coming into view. I could only see a small part of the hallway through the open bedroom door. But then, it seemed like somebody walked towards the doorway. It was so dark that I couldn't see very well but I kept watching. Then I saw much more clear, a man walking into the doorway of Sam's room. When I saw this, I realized that even though it was really dark, I could tell that it wasn't Sam's dad. I had no idea as to who it would be. I closed my eyes and didn't move a muscle. I was pretending to be asleep even though I wasn't. The man kept standing there for a little while. After probably like 30 seconds, I opened my eyes again and he was still there. He was just standing in the doorway and facing us. I couldn't completely tell if he was looking at me. I didn't move my head at all and just opened my eyes very carefully. I closed my eyes again and pretended to be asleep. 
I just hoped that the man wouldn't enter Sam's room. Then I heard the guy sort of walking away down the hallway. I really didn't know who this guy was or why he was here. I also didn't know if he was going to come back or not. As I laid there, I just kept closing my eyes and didn't move. During this time, I didn't really hear any more noises. I was really too scared to get up and wake Sam up or do anything else. Eventually, after I'm not even sure how long, I fell asleep. The next thing I knew, I was waking up and it was still- I'm not going to sleep after that. What? You crazy. Arc out. Sam was tapping me on the shoulder, telling me to wake up. After sitting up in my sleeping bag, I noticed that Sam's bedroom door was now closed. He then told me that there was a man in the house and the police were on the way. We were supposed to stay in his bedroom and not leave. Then we waited inside of Sam's bedroom and didn't really hear much. But after a while later, the police arrived and we continued to stay in the bedroom. After a long time, Sam's parents finally came and told us what happened. We found out that a man was located hiding in the basement. I guess he tried opening Sam's parents' bedroom and it woke both of them up. The man fled and Sam's parents called the cops. Then they knew that the man was at the other end of the house and Sam woke up from the noise. He then left the bedroom to see what was going on and when he returned, he woke me up. I guess it was the same man that I had seen. I'm really glad that the man didn't cause any harm. I never found out why he had entered or how he had entered the house. I slept over at Sam's house multiple times after that. Luckily, nothing like that ever happened again. Yeah, nah, my, nah. See, for me, it's first, first. What's it called? First impressions are everything. You know, or it just takes. I'm a first time kind of guy. Pause. I don't know why I said pause. And so, if we've been cool for a while and I'm going over your house for the first time and some cluck shit happened, I'm not going back over your house for a very long time. Also, I can't, I can't stop. I can't help but think. Were was these what? Was Sam really out to get you? Some of these stories be having plot holes, and I need to know. I be having hella questions. I need to know how he got in there, why he got in there. Maybe your mom and dad was in cahoots, and whoever else was in the house is in cahoots. One bizarre thing that happened when I was a kid was a sleepover experience that I had. It was back when I was probably about eight or nine years old. I just know that I lived with my parents and older brother in the suburbs. A new family moved into the house across the street and one house to the right. They had a kid who was my age, and I remember meeting him when they first arrived. His name was Jake. There were a few kids in the neighborhood that I would hang out with here and there. Over the first week or two that Jake lived there, I sort of hung out with him like twice. My impression of him was that he was pretty weird. He was kind of rude and didn't seem to like the same things that the other neighborhood kids and I did. There were a few games that we would always play, and I remember that when we invited him, he said that they were dumb. I don't really remember- Yeah, that's because he probably really likes games that like, he probably really likes games like Grand Theft Auto, or like people you can cluck up and not just cluck up people. Um, he probably, if, if there is, Saw games like from the like the movies, he probably likes shit like that, you know. He he honestly he probably just likes to fart like I did. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, he honestly might just like to might might like the games where he's killing people or cucking up people, you know, like the like the Jason Voorhees movies or some shit. Hell no. But I just know that I didn't have the best. He probably one. I'm sorry. He's probably one of those guys or people that had the Mortal Kombat games and only gets them just to watch the brutalities, fatalities, the x rays, and then, and then as the animation is showing, time out.
he probably only watches movies that's or TV shows that's based off serial killers, pedos, uh, cluck asses. Yeah. I shouldn't think. Then, one day, my mom told me that Jake was going to have a sleepover with me. I remember thinking, when did I agree to this? <laughs> I told my mom that I thought he was kind of weird, but she said that he probably was just shy and insecure about moving to a new town. Apparently, Jake's mom asked my mom if he could stay over because she wanted him to make new friends. It, it, but, yo, it has to be a mutual thing. I want, you can't just say yes and then not ask me. Hell no. That, and vice versa. Don't do that. Please don't do that. Hell no. I'm good. I'm good. Run it by me. And then I'll give you the final say so. Don't just don't just automatically assume. Like, you know, be cool. Because we not. I'm not sure if he had a hard time making friends or anything. But I reluctantly agreed. So Jake walked over with his mom. And our moms talked for a little while. Jake's mom seemed pretty nice. But Jake really didn't. We went upstairs to my bedroom, and I figured that... Yeah, that's because that nice shit, that night, that nice, that not nice shit, that clock shit, he'd get from his father. He could just play video games. I talked to Jake for a while. I don't really remember much of the conversation, though. Then we started gaming, and I was feeling a little bit better about him. He was decent at whatever games we played, and we didn't really have to talk much. We could just go on from one game to the next. And it's always nice to have somebody to game with. This was before online gaming was super popular. So multiplayer often meant having to actually have another person there in the room. At whatever time I usually went to bed, we stopped gaming and Jake had a sleeping bag that he brought with him. Then I got into my bed and the lights went out. The next thing I remember was waking up when it was still dark out. I was like half awake and didn't know what was going on. After opening my eyes, though, I noticed Jake standing in my bedroom. He was holding one of the little Nerf footballs that I had. He then walked over to my bedroom window and opened it up. Now, I was just laying there, still squinting my eyes from having just woken up. I didn't say anything or even move. After opening my bedroom window, Jake tossed the ball out of it. Then he walked over and grabbed another ball and tossed that out of the window as well. I really don't know why I just... Don't. Okay, 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 okay. Since we tossing shit out the window, come in, you ain't... <laughs> Club, since you want to toss shit out the window, how about we toss your ass? But my guess is that I was just so confused. That and the fact that I had literally just woken up from a deep sleep. Then Jake walked over and picked up my PlayStation, unhooking the controllers and other wires. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Because that's where you brought, that's where, I'm good. You could have literally thrown anything else out the window. If I had an Xbox, trash. If I had a Wii, trash. Nintendo, trash. <laughs> Not no PlayStation. Hell no. Nah. I realized that he was probably going to toss that out of the window as well. When he was walking over to the window, I finally spoke up. I asked him what on earth he was doing. He then looked over at me surprised, as if he didn't expect me to wake up. <laughs> what? Then he dropped my PlayStation on the ground right there, turned, and then he ran out of my bedroom. I was shocked. I got up and walked out of the room, and then heard our front door to the house opening. He had left the house entirely. I walked down, and then I left the house to see where Jake had gone. When I got out into the front yard, I saw Jake sprinting into his yard and then entering his house. I was really weirded out by this. I went and got my Nerf balls that he dropped out the window. Then I went back inside and went back to bed. The next morning, I told my parents about it, who seemed to be just as confused as I was. We thought that maybe he was sleepwalking or something, but his parents never said anything about it before or after. For about two weeks, I didn't see Jake at all. I don't recall seeing his parents outside either. Then, the next time that I saw him was almost just as strange. One night, I was sitting in my bedroom playing video games like I often did. It was warm, so I went to open up my window to get a cool breeze. My window faced out the front yard, 
And as soon as I looked outside, I saw somebody standing in the front yard. I looked closer and realized that it was Jake. He was just standing there at the end of the front yard by the street, right next to the pine tree, and he appeared to be staring right at me. I kept looking at him for probably 10 seconds. Then Jake turned and walked away. I didn't know what this kid's problem with me was. I checked out of my window several more times that night, but never saw him again. So these events took place during the summertime. I was expecting that once the school year came around, he would probably be in my class. But his family ended up moving towards the end of the summer. I never did see him again after that. I still wonder why he acted that way and did those strange things. He a clock ass. What you talking about? Clock? This is something that happened back in 2003. For some background details, I'm a female and was 12 years old at the time. I had a group of friends that I went to school with, and we would hang out together all the time. So at one time, I remember I was at my friend Jen's house with a couple of other friends. There were maybe four or five of us. We were all going to be staying over for the night at Jen's. I remember that her parents' house was really nice, and they had this big living room. That's where we were going to sleep, and we all had sleeping bags, other than whoever would sleep on the couch. So I remember that we were hanging out, and as it got late, we were just watching- What the hell is this? In this bowl? Is that popcorn? What is that? Me and movies. Everyone else had gone to bed besides us by probably 11 o'clock. Now, I remember that a little while after that, another friend, Alyssa, that was with us, went to the kitchen. The kitchen was next to the dining room, which was directly next to the living room. Alyssa suddenly came back into the living room really fast, and she said that she saw a man in the window in the kitchen. At first, we thought that she had to be joking with us. I mean, it just seemed really unlikely. Who jokes about some shit like that? Nobody that I know, Club, And I promise you, if they're joking like that, we've not, there's no relationship whatsoever. Now, you know, I mean, people could joke like that. It's just, in the context of this situation, you're not, you're not joking like that. And so she probably dead ass. And if she dead ass, to the ones that thought she was joking, y'all probably some cluck asses. But Alyssa insisted that she was not joking. And I thought that either she was serious or a really good actor. She was telling us that she saw a guy walking past the window and then kind of look in at her. One of the lights in the kitchen was on, but it was dim. Outside, it was completely dark, so it would have been difficult to see any details about the man. After a small discussion in the living room, basically all of us went into the kitchen and looked. By now, there was nothing. No one was there. We then gathered back in the living room and talked about it some more. We were trying to figure out why somebody would be in the backyard. Jen said that she wasn't aware of anything like that happening before. Eventually, we just can check the damn checklist. Because y'all have yet to say something, anything like that. ...on what we were doing. I think we all figured it was maybe a neighbor cutting through the backyard or something. What? And probably a couple of hours went by. By about one o'clock in the morning, we were starting to get tired and going to go to sleep soon. I remember that I was thirsty and I went into the kitchen to get some water. Oh, thirsty. Right yeah. when I walked in, I noticed through the back window there was a guy right there. I really couldn't believe it at first. He appeared to be looking in was maybe a foot or two away from the window, but I really couldn't tell any details about what he looked like or anything. I immediately ran back into the living room and told everyone. At once, I think everybody got up and started running through the dining room to the kitchen. But again, when we got there, the man was gone. We looked out of the windows of the dining room, kitchen, and even the window in the living room, but did not see anybody. We stayed up for at least another hour talking about it. Finally, though, we were convinced that the man was gone for good this time. Everybody went to bed, including myself. We all woke up the next morning, and Jen's parents were making breakfast in the kitchen. I remember that we went in there to get something to eat. As a few of us were sitting around talking and eating, Jen's dad went outside to the patio from the kitchen. I'm not sure where he was going, but when he came back inside, he said that there were a bunch of marks at the back door. It was as if somebody was trying to get inside. So for the next few minutes after that, we were all talking about the man that we had seen. It seems as though he tried breaking in, but luckily he didn't. 
Jesus. Security ass. This happened one time when I was sleeping over at a friend's house. Cap. I think I was about 10 or so. I had a really good friend named Jordan back then, and I would go to his house sometimes to hang out. A few times, I stayed overnight, and he lived pretty close to me. So I remember that one time when I went over to sleep over at his house, we were outside in the early afternoon. He lived in a pretty quiet neighborhood for the most part, but there were a lot of other houses nearby. Jordan's yard was fairly big, so we were outside playing some kind of sport. I remember that he had a neighbor directly across the street. The neighbor was a man who was somewhat thin and had kind of blonde, messy hair. I remember that when we were outside, the guy was just kind of standing around in his front yard and looking in our direction. Jordan told me that the guy always seemed odd to him. I didn't really ask why or anything. At least, I don't remember. So I remember that the guy almost appeared to be watching us, which was strange. We moved into the backyard after that because he was kind of creeping us out, but it seemed like that sort of behavior was kind of normal for the guy. So eventually, we went back inside and were probably playing video games for the rest of the time. I just remember that when we went to bed, I was sleeping on the floor in my sleeping bag. I fell asleep rather quickly, but was awoken sometime in the night. I remember being wide awake when I woke up, so I just started looking around. Everything was dark and completely silent. The only noise was the sound of a highway getting an occasional vehicle off in the distance. I'm really not sure what time it was, but probably like one o'clock in the morning if I had to guess. Then I suddenly heard the sound of somebody walking inside of the house. It was like there was footsteps somewhere on the first floor. This immediately seemed odd to me. Things had been so quiet, and I knew Jordan's parents and sister had long gone to bed. I was hoping that maybe it was one of them. Then I heard the footsteps coming up the stairs and headed for the hallway that Jordan's bedroom was in. Jordan's room was at the very end of the hallway, so I could see the top of the stairs from where I was. As I was looking over, I soon saw a man walking up. He was moving pretty slowly, but I soon recognized that it was Jordan's neighbor from across the street. Okay. As soon as I saw this, I knew that I had to do something. Jordan's door had been opened for some reason, and I quickly left my sleeping bag, ran over to the door, and closed it. I then realized that there was actually a lock on his door, so I locked it. I heard the man walking down the hallway on the other side, and he seemed to be making a beeline for Jordan's room. I went over to Jordan's bed and shook him to wake him up. I then told him that I saw his neighbor inside the house. It was at about this time that the neighbor guy tried opening Jordan's bedroom door. With it being locked, it wouldn't open. Jordan was immediately just as scared as I was. We really didn't know what to do. There was no phone in Jordan's room, so we couldn't call the police. After trying the door a couple of times, the man stopped, and things were quiet for a few moments, but we did not hear him walk away. Then we heard this noise at the door. It sounded like the neighbor guy was perhaps trying to pick the lock on it. At least, that's what we both thought. He didn't have a key, but the door almost sounded like it was trying to be unlocked. At that point, Jordan just started yelling loudly. He started yelling for the man to leave, and also yelling to call the police, and I then joined in after him. Hopefully his parents would hear, and they had a phone in their bedroom. We were yelling that there was a man in the house and stuff. When this happened, not only did the noises at the door stop, but we then heard the guy starting to move away. Shortly after, we heard Jordan's parents get up, and a door to the house opened and closed. Jordan's parents came to his room and asked us what happened. Man. When we told them, they of course called the police. The man had left, and was not at his house when the police arrived. We talked with the police for a while, and let them know everything that happened. Well, the next day I got picked up by my mom, and I heard from Jordan later on in the day that the police had arrested the man. That made us both feel a lot better. That was by far my craziest sleepover experience that I've ever had. All right. This happened back when I was a kid. I was 12 and my best friend Ryan came over one Friday to sleep over. We would both hang out all the time. On this day in particular, he came over after school. That night, my parents and sister were gone at her soccer game until later, so it was just Ryan and I at the house. We were playing video games in the living room for most of the time. At probably like 8 p.m., there was a knock on the front door. 
It was really strange because we hardly ever had people knocking on our door. I paused the game and looked to the window. I couldn't see who was at the door from there, so I got up and walked over. Then I checked out of the living room window. There was some random guy there, and I had no idea as to who he was. I didn't get a very good look at him, but enough to tell that I didn't know him. He seemed a little bit sketchy too, so I chose not to answer it. I went back over to the TV, and Ryan and I continued gaming. The guy knocked at the door once more, but we still didn't bother to answer it. We hoped that he would go away and not stay there. Several minutes later, we hadn't heard anything, so I went over to the window to check. When I did, the man was gone. So after that, we figured that that was the end of it. Soon enough, Ryan's parents and sister got home. Ryan and I just kept playing video games, and we ended up staying up later than everybody else. So I remember that the later it got, the quieter things became, other than the TV. I don't know exactly what time it was, but we heard this noise coming from outside by the window. We both turned around at the same time to look. When we did, we saw this man at the window. It appeared to be the guy who had been at the door earlier. When we saw this, Ryan and I both sprinted out of the living room from my bedroom. When we went inside, literally right after that, we heard the sound of glass breaking coming from the living room. God damn. It sounded like the man had broken into the house. We locked the bedroom door, and luckily I did have a phone in there. We called the police, and I could hear the man just for a moment inside of the house. But things got really quiet after that. He didn't seem to go anywhere near the hallway where the bedrooms were. The police were fast to arrive, and got there only about five minutes later. The next thing that I knew, they were inside of the house. My parents and sister got up from the commotion. When Ryan and I came out of my room, there were multiple cops in the house speaking with my parents. I found out that the man had been inside and was arrested. He was located hiding behind the living room couch. It was a crazy night, but after that, things were fine. Of course, we had to get the living room window replaced. I'm not really sure what the man was after or why he chose to break into our house. I really can't believe that he broke in. I'm glad that Ryan and I were able to get to my room and then call the police when we did. So I'm gonna ask y'all a question and be honest. Can you keep it anonymous? I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> um, so for the people that that be doing sleepovers, if y'all be doing either sleepovers or parties or having somebody stay over your house, overnight, or her, or however long. Would you have to know the person? Like, really know them for them to, like, spend the night? Or for them to stay a couple of, a couple of days? You know? Or if, just to come inside your house for a little bit. Would you have to know them, know them? Or would you just have to, like, you know... They, would, they don't necessarily have to be your best friends. But you would have to, like... Would you have to, like... Know, like, the whole life story or some shit? Or would you... I don't know how to say this because... You can know somebody for a while and think they good, they think cool. And y'all had it off. And y'all, like, you know, y'all real cool. Y'all close, y'all tight. But your friend or whatever never came over your house. You know what I mean? Let, let's say for a co-worker, right? Let's say your best friends are co-workers, right? You co-worker, best friend. Y'all be hating it off. Y'all be laughing up a storm, right? If one person get in trouble, we... I don't... Nah, never mind. I was going to say if one person get in trouble, then I'm getting in trouble. I'm not. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> But you know, y'all best friends at work. Y'all best, y'all co worker best friends. Right? Y'all have each other's number. Y'all be FaceTiming each other. You know, y'all be taking, you know, each other's shifts or whatnot. Right? Come on with the leaf lower, man. Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so, y'all, y'all, y'all best friends at, at work. And y'all been best friends for a while. Co-worker best friends for a while. But y'all never came over each other's house. And so you invited, and you finally invite them over your house and they cluck you up. <laughs> it's just, 
and my mind be going crazy. Like, you could be friends with somebody for a while, and as soon as you let them in your personal space, as soon as you let them in your house, they be, they be acting weird. Or they doing some cluck shit. You ever experienced that? Let me know in the comment section below. Keep it cool, keep it classy. And I love you, stay happy, my family.